what I'm talking about. Welcome back to the laboratory. We're working on the Mustang again. Seems we're always working on the Mustang. It never ends with the Mustang. Anyway, if you watched last time, we tried to get a handle on the clutch adjustment and everything went sideways. So we still need to do that. Uh, now, I fixed the header problem, I hope, and off camera, I already went and dialed two turns out of the clutch because the last data log showed that it was locking up completely. Uh, so we knew, we knew we had too much clutch adjustment uh, in there. Uh, and I took it for a quick drive and two turns was too much. Um, even under moderate acceleration, um, you could feel the clutch was, uh, was slipping. So I need to put one turn back in there. Now, when I talk about turns of, a, uh, of uh, clutch adjustment, I'm talking about a turn of each adjuster screw on the static adjustment on the springs. If you're not familiar with that, then um, I'll link to uh, video here on clutch science where I explain um, all of that stuff. Anyway, we need to add one more turn of, of clutch adjustment back in there. Um, we had four turns and four turns, um, I can tell you exactly how much pressure that gave. With my handy little spreadsheet here, uh, four turns was 732.6 pounds of static force. When I took that down to two turns, uh, that gave us 567.6 uh, pounds of static force, which wasn't enough. So if we split the difference and we go with three turns, that gives us 650 pounds of static force. So we're going to try that and see how it goes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I can make that static clutch adjustment without having to take the transmission um, out and get at the adjusters. I have an ingenious way of adjusting it externally. The other thing that happened is, historically, if you've been watching the channel, you'll know that I had an issue with the injectors that were in there. One side of the engine was running like a full number richer than air fuel ra ratio uh, than the other side. And I wasn't sure if it was vacuum leak or injectors um, or exhaust leaks uh, that were uh, skewing the wide bend. So in one of the many times I had the intake manifold off, I swapped the injectors side for side and well, the problem followed the injectors. So I knew that it was an injector problem. So I ordered up a set of rebuilt uh, 30 pound injectors that are Siemens injectors now instead of Lucas injectors, even though they look almost identical, uh, stuck those in there and on the drive that I took um, off camera, well, everything was way lean. So besides doing clutch adjustment, we need to do some tuning on the engine now to try and get the air fuels back to where they need to be. So this video is in, going to include the clutch adjustment and the tuning of the engine. So first things first, let's adjust the clutch. So how we adjust the clutch on my Mustang is actually from the comfort of the inside of the car. I don't need to actually get underneath uh, to get at the clutch adjustment on this thing. How we do that is, well, with the Doug Nash transmission on the front of it, it's got like kind of a generic bolt pattern for GM, Ford, and I guess Mopar. So there's several holes in the mounting flange. One of those holes on the right top of the transmission just happens to be in the exact right location where one of the clutch adjusters will actually come by there. So as we rotate the engine, uh, all six clutch adjusters will eventually align with that hole. So I made myself a special tool here so this end engages with the clutch adjuster and then it's long enough that I can actually through the console here, I can slide it forward, engage it in the adjuster and then from the comfort of the passenger seat here, I can turn this thing thus adjusting the clutch adjusters. So we need to pop the console shifter boot off. We'll do that first. And get it out of the way. Well, actually we're gonna need that in neutral. And I'm gonna come back with a better camera angle so you can see what's going on here. But first things first, for this thing to align with the adjuster, the adjuster needs to be in the right place. So to do that, 
I made six marks on the crankshaft damper where those six adjusters align with that hole. So we need to crank the engine around until adjuster number one is aligned with the hole. Then I can slide this thing in, do my adjustment, pull it out, rotate the crankshaft to the next adjuster mark, slide it in, do my adjustment, and then so on and so forth for all six adjustment points. So let's get the crankshaft in the right location first. All right, hopefully you can see this. So we'll get our ratchet on here. And we're in luck because the first adjuster position was really handy. Okay, so that position right there on the balancer is where our first adjuster lines up with the hole in the top of the transmission and the bell housing where we can slide in our adjuster tool. So let's go adjust it and then we'll come back and we'll do position number two. All right, again, hopefully you can see this. But here comes a whole lot of fumbling around to try and find the hole in the first place. So we can feel for the bell housing. We can feel for the flange of the transmission. And then once we've got the transmission flange, we need to feel around for the hole. This might be a good time for some time lapse. Oh, there we go. We've got the hole. Okay, and we jiggle it around until we can feel that we're on the adjuster. Again, I don't know if you can actually see this. Probably not with my hand in the way. So there's our tool. We can see our mark is right on top. So we're going to try not to disturb the wiring here. And to add pressure, we actually turn counterclockwise. So we need to do a half a turn, a full turn, sorry, not a half a turn. And here's where I'm struggling with the light. Okay, so there's a half a turn. And that's the camera falling over. Okay, so everything uh, went to hell there with the camera falling over. But anyway, if you can see it, you probably can't. But way down in there, the adjuster tool has gone one full turn. So now we're going to grab the tool. We're going to pull it back just far enough that I can rotate the engine. We're going to rotate the engine to position two, and then we're going to do this all over again. And then position three, four, five, and six. You get the idea. Okay, so for position number two, we're just going to crank over until the number two lines up like that. And go back and give it a turn of adjustment uh, inside and then we'll continue doing this for the rest of the adjusters until we have one turn in all six adjusters. All right, and there is one turn for number six. So we can pull our tool out. We can reinstall our shifter boot. Be careful with the line lock wiring. And there we are. Clutch is adjusted. Next is to fatten up the tune so it's not going to be lean. So let's get after that next. 
All right, so we just got a short data log here. This was with the tune that was in the car originally and just swapping in the injectors. So um, you can see me going up through the gears here. Well, let me explain what's what here. The green is our air fuel ratio from the wideband. The white is the commanded air fuel ratio, um, which is mostly flat lining here at, at 14.64. Um, and then I've got some other curves showing here for um, engine RPM, um, mass air voltage, uh, throttle position. So I know when I'm on and off the throttle for transients. And then we're watching to see what the factory narrowband um, oxygen sensors are doing here as well. But the top graph here is, uh, is the important one. You can see that my wideband pegs out at um, 16 to one, so it won't read any leaner than that. And you can see for most of the most of the data log here, it's uh, it's pegged out. So again, we start here, we're going up through the gears, so there's some transition effects. Um, it's gonna get rich when you get off the throttle um, because of wall wetting effects um, in the intake. Um, but when we're at steady state here, we're calling for, you know, 14.6 and we're getting, um, you know, high 15s, 16s. We go through the gears here again, we see some more transition effects um, and then once we um, get back to idle here at the end of the data log, uh, you can see it's um, it's mid to high 15s, and we're still seeing some spots here where we're pegging out at uh, at 16 to one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the tune, and as a first iteration, we're just going to throw 10% more fuel um, everywhere, and then go and get another data log, and then see if we need to fine tune it from uh, from there. So let's look into the tune, and I'll show you how I do that. All right, for tuning my car, I use binary editing software instead of the software that comes with the tweaker itself because I find this is a bit more powerful. Uh, so there's a couple different ways that we can add the 10% more fuel. Um, one is we can go in and we can play with the injector settings and tell the engine that the injectors are um, a little bit smaller. So they the ECU will hold the injectors open longer to try and um, you know, give the same amount of fuel and in effect it gives, uh, it gives more fuel by um, telling if the injectors are smaller. But the values that I had in here in the um, previous calibration were the published values for um, the 30 pound Bosch injectors that were from Ford Motorsport. So these are really reliable um, settings and you probably don't wanna mess with that. So the other way that we can do it is we can tell it that there's a different amount of air that's going in the engine. So if we tell the engine that there's more air flowing in there, then it'll calculate that it needs to put more fuel in there uh, as well. So previously I had tuned this thing with the other injectors and again, one side of the engine was running like a full air fuel number richer than the other side. So I basically tuned it to the lean side, but the tune that I've got in there right now, um, like who knows how accurate this mass air um, curve actually is because of the injector problem that I had. So I'm more apt to go in and make corrections to the mass air curve here um, rather than mess with the injector settings, assuming that the new injectors that I've got are all good and nothing weird is gonna happen there. Uh, we're gonna correct the calibration by correcting the mass air curve here. So what the mass air curve does, this is for the mass air meter. So for a given amount of airflow going through there, it's gonna register a certain amount of voltage and then the ECU interprets that voltage um, you know, again, we're telling it this is how much um, airflow uh, corresponds to that much voltage, and then it can calculate an injector pulse width if it knows the injector um, parameters uh, properly. So if we tell it that there's more air going in there, then it's gonna calculate more fuel. So again, for a first iteration, we're just gonna take uh, this whole thing and we're going to multiply it by uh, 1.1 uh, to give us 10%. So that is gonna richen up um, the entire um, mass air curve from one end to the other. Then we'll go and get a data log at idle, at part throttle, and do some wide open thr throttle stuff again. And we'll see what the air fuel ratio looks like. And if we have to make tweaks, we can make tweaks at idle or part throttle or at wide open throttle um, here. But uh, for the first iteration, this is just uh, a quick and easy way to try and get our wideband from pegging at 16 and getting some useful um, numbers. So. We'll, uh, we'll take this tune um, and put it in the car, run another data log, uh, come back and look at it again and see what editing we still need to do. In my Mustang, I'm using a tweaker to modify the calibration of the stock ECU. And 
for calibration purposes, I'm using binary editors. So with the tweaker, you actually have four different tunes that you can load in there. And I've got a switch on the console here that allows me to switch between the four of them. So I've gone in and I've richened up um, four different tunes that have slightly different parameters in them that I'm going to experiment with. But uh, anyway, they've all been richened up 10% and then we'll see, you know, what happens. Uh, we'll watch the wideband and see if our calibration is uh, is going to be closer. And if not, then we'll go and richen it up a little bit more. But I've got the first tune loaded up here. So I need to, I need to plug the thing in first. And then key on. And you, it'll recognize that it's connected to a tweaker now. So I'll need to switch the position to uh, position number one for this tune and we're going to hit right and it's going to write the calibration uh, into the tweaker okay so it's verified uh, it's in there and then I'm just going to check my tuning notes here and see which one I want in position number two is revision 56. So I'll open that calibration. My mouse is a bit sticky in here. Switch or switch to position two and do the same thing. Click right and away it goes. And we'll do this for tune three and tune four as well. And with all four calibrations now in the tweaker, we're going to set ourselves back to position number two, because that's the first tune that I want to actually test. Um, tune number one is going to attempt closed loop. I'm not that confident yet that we can get there. So uh, position number two here is an open loop tune. So we'll see how that goes. So I'll switch to the data logging dash and we'll move the camera inside the car, fire this thing up, take it for a road test, and see how it goes. All right, so here's our new data log, and we've got a little bit of everything in here. We've got idle time, we've got part throttle cruise, at a couple of different speeds, highway speeds, city speeds. Um, we've got a little spot here of uh, wide open throttle pull um, in third gear. So what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to look at the difference between our green line here, which is our wideband reported air fuel ratio, and the white line here, which is our commanded um, air fuel ratio. And any discrepancy between the two needs to be a correction um, on the mass air curve. So the yellow line um, on this graph is our mass air voltage. Um, so if we look here, we can see that we're pretty close, um, maybe slightly, uh, slightly rich here at our idle. Um, again, as we go through the gears here, we've got transition effects. So we need to be really careful to um, make sure that we're looking at steady state conditions before we make any changes to the mass air curve because there's transition fueling effects that happen when you get into the throttle or out of the throttle. So the green line here is our throttle position. So we wanna look for spots where we have nice flat throttle and we've got a nice flat you know, uh, plateau for mass air voltage. So what we wanna do is you know, for each mass air voltage, ideally we wanna find a spot in this curve here somewhere where we can look and see what the discrepancy is between our commanded air fuel ratio and our actual achieved air fuel ratio. So most of it you can see here is, is actually pretty close. Um, our wide open throttle spot here, if I zoom in um, a little bit, you can see that we're commanding here um, about a 13.04, but we're achieving here, you know, um, low 12s. Now this is with the mufflers on the car. And I, I know this car that when you uncork the headers, um, it'll go like almost a full point leaner. So if I'm seeing low 12s here with the mufflers on, when I go to the racetrack and I uncork it, these low 12s are gonna become low 13s. 
So I'm happy with this discrepancy here. It's going to be okay. I'm more interested in the part throttle stuff and what's going on at, uh, at idle. So again, most of the part throttle stuff looks pretty good. So the 10% that we, uh, we threw at the whole curve looked like it was a good correction, um, except when we look at the idle range here and we can see that we're commanding 14.6 at idle and we're getting like high 13s at idle here. So we need to go into the idle range and we need to take a little bit of fuel out. So if we look at our mass air voltage, we're at about 1.3 um, volts on our mass air meter at idle. Um, when we're at um, 1.5 volts, uh, we're bang on. So uh, 1.3 is a bit too rich. As soon as we get to 1.5 and up, uh, we're happy with it. So if we go into the mass air table in our calibration now, so um, well, we've got 1.4 and we've got 1.2. We don't have a 1.3. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from 1.2 down and we're going to multiply that by 0.95 to take 5% of fueling out of there and then to transition between here. 1.5 again was, was perfect. We don't have a 1.5 on here. We've got 1.6. Uh, so this value here, we're going to multiply that one by 0.98. So 0.95 for all of this stuff, 0.98, and then leave the rest of it alone, and we'll get a nice smooth transition here. So we'll load this tune back into it, and we'll probably be perfect um, after that. So here's the race pack data. Red line is engine RPM, green line is drive shaft RPM, and the yellow line is our engine to drive shaft ratio. So I'm cruising along here at 2600 RPM when I nail it, and the engine RPM immediately jumps up to 35, about 34, well, 3500 RPM. And you could see in the yellow line here the, sh the slippage between the engine and the drive shaft. So the clutch is doing what it's supposed to do. It's slipping, and it slips for a while. It heats up, it grabs harder like the sintered iron does, and then it locks up, and then it holds tight. Um, all the way up to the shift point and then um, power shift into fourth and there's no sig significant clutch slippage on the shift. So it looks like we've got a really good tune-up in the thing right now for the clutch. 
Um, next step is to put slicks on it and launch it at the track and see how far it pulls down and see how much it slips and then make fine adjustments to the base um, you know, clutch force uh, from there going forward. So we're happy with this. So I was all ready to sit down here and wrap up this video and tell you how everything went smooth. We've got a good tune in the engine. We've got a good tune in the clutch. We're going to the racetrack next. And well, I learned long ago to trust nothing, always measure. So I've only got one wide band and all the tuning that I've been doing on the engine was with the wide band on the first bank on the passenger side with the new injectors. And again, don't trust, always measure. So off camera, I took the wide band and I stuck it in bank two on the driver's side and then went and did my exact same loop, test loop. And well, guess what? That side of the engine is way lean compared to bank one. So you didn't think I'd do a video where there wasn't complete fail somehow, right? Well, here it is again. I guess the lesson is don't buy injectors off eBay, no matter how legit they look. If anybody out there watching has a set of Flowmatch 30 pound EV1 injectors, let me know because I'd really like a set. Anyway, we're going to swap the injectors. These are the new injectors, but we're going to go through the same routine. We're going to swap the injectors bank for bank like I did with the old injectors and confirm that it's an injector problem um, like I did with the old injectors. And then, I don't know, we're going to try and find a set of flow matched injectors somewhere, somehow. Anyway, if you've watched up until this point, Thanks for sticking it out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, all of you subscribers. By the way, a lot of you subscribers, ring the bell. Get the notifications. It doesn't hurt. As usual, like, comment. We talked about subscribing already. Share with your friends. As usual, be kind and be humble. See you next time. Anyway, anyway, if anyway, 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 anyway.